Welcome everyone, welcome to Working in Baptist Church Online. It's great to see you if you're a regular with us or if you're a visitor. Welcome. Well, today is the first Sunday in the Christian season of Lent, which began on Wednesday this week. As you'll know, the traditional day before it starts, Shrove Tuesday, is traditionally Pancake Day. And we ask you to send in your photos and videos of your pancake efforts. Let's take a look. Great, an epic fail or two and some really beautiful creative pancakes in there too. All are wonderful. Speaking of creativity, our theme this week is another chapter title from Brenny Brown's book, The Gift of Imperfection, which we're drawing from throughout our current series. Today's is called Cultivating Creativity, Letting Go of Comparison. Leading us as we reflect on this theme today is someone who models creativity in a really wonderful way herself, and that's our own Anna Adams. We'll hear from Anna in a moment, but first, here's some ways that some people from our church said they express their creativity. Good morning. Um, today, I am going to share with you mine and other people's thoughts on creativity and how it can bring us closer to God. If we lose the baggage of comparison, find our humility and accept who we are. Now, I understand that many people will close off their interest uh, on the topic of creativity because they believe they aren't creative. In this service, I'm going to attempt to smash that a little, so do stay with me. We are a church full of creative people, some of whom we heard of in the PowerPoint earlier um, and many who we didn't. I've chosen to, today to talk to three people outside of the church for this service, just to get a different perspective. So in this series, we've been referencing Brené Brown's book, The Gifts of Imperfection. 
Two of the things she talks about on the chapter on creativity is one that adults feel it's too indulgent to be creative or they're too embarrassed, busy or distracted to pursue creativity. So looking into that. And second is thinking about creativity as what we uniquely bring into the world. These are two things I'd like to draw out today alongside the two short readings we're going to hear now. Good morning. Today there are two lessons. The first is from John 12, 1 to 5. The second is from Matthew 18, 1 to 5. Jesus anointed at Bethany. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honour. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. Matthew 18 the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me in the first bible passage mary does three things she expresses herself she is worshiping and she's serving so i'm going to look at expression and worship and service and linking those into the things i talked about earlier she expresses herself. She lets her hair down, literally. She is fully in the moment. She humbles herself before Jesus and the others in the room. She knows she'll be up for criticism, and she is. Her behaviour reminds me of a child. Free, real, honest. And in the other passage read to us, Jesus asks us, to come to him as children. What are children like? They're trusting, free, open, real, honest, willing to be led and guided, loving, living in the present, constantly questioning, constantly talking, vulnerable, creative. And often, as adults, we are cynical, bound, closed. We wear masks, we're stubborn, we busy ourselves, think we know best, live weighed down by our past and fearing our future. Mary is an adult and yet, led by love for Jesus, she expresses herself right there in the moment. As adults, how do we express ourselves? Children create, express their creativity through playing, Drawing, make-believe, dancing, banging a drum, making, baking, painting, dressing up, singing, building. The list is endless. Slowly, as we get older, we have less time. We have less inclination. It feels a bit indulgent. It takes too much effort. And crucially, we start to compare ourselves to others. And we say things like, oh, I can't draw like so-and-so. So we stop drawing. Or cruelly people might have said to us you can't be in the school choir you're tone deaf and we take these things to heart we saw in our congregation about what our congregation said um, and Anna Wan said I, I don't think I have any creativity Val said I don't think of myself as creative because we have an idea of what that means 
and we compare ourselves to it. Brené Brown says, comparison is the thief of happiness. When we don't think we're creative, the thought of doing something creative is scary and vulnerable because we might not be very good at it. People might criticise us or question us or worse still, we criticise ourselves. I think by doing that, we're closing a part of ourselves off to God. What would happen if we lost our inhibitions? What if we became like children or like Mary? opening her soul, pouring out that expensive nard over Jesus. There will always be people that look down on us or criticise us, just like Judas in the Bible reading. But Mary's indulgence, her bravery, vulnerability brought her closer to, to Jesus. It demonstrates connection, depth and understanding. That's what I want to experience too in my relationship with Jesus. For this service, I interviewed someone I have admired from afar for some years, Emma Major. She is a local pioneer lay minister, a blind wheelchair user and poet. She has written books about mental health, ministry and poetry, including being the author and illustrator of Little Guy, Journey of Hope. Unfortunately, Emma is suffering with long-term COVID and speaking is too exhausting for her at the moment. Um, so I interviewed her over email and I've put together a film of her artwork and some quotes from the interview that really struck a chord with me and inspired me. I love what Emma says at the end there. I could accept love like a child, open and fully. I wonder whether the reason Mary could freely pour that nard over Jesus's feet was because she could accept Jesus's love for her. She truly knew what it was to feel God's love without, as Emma says, second guessing. I see too that there is a reverence in what Emma is doing when she's creative. It seems her expression is also a form of worship. We see that reverence in Mary too. She's expressing her love and she's serving Jesus by washing his feet, but she's chosen expensive perfume, not water. It's respectful and special and knowing. Expressing our creativity can be a form of worship. Emma also talks about her creativity as being healing and creativity is often used as a way of expressing inner pain and anguish. Probably the most well-known, best loved, most used book in the Bible are the Psalms. I wonder whether David and the others who wrote them were criticised for spending too much time on them. Perhaps they were indulgent, but they speak to us so well about joy and pain and depression and love, all those really human feelings. 
I recently spoke to Lee, who is a current resident at Yeldor Manor. He shared with me his journey with creativity and how therapeutic he now finds it whilst in recovery. So I'm going to share a brief film um, now with you. I always wanted to be creative. As a child, I would love to, I would spend hours on my own in my room drawing, creating worlds with Lego and Meccano. And some of my fondest memories were punctual, you know, in and around my Christian grandmother who always encouraged me to do so. Sadly, as I got older, those dreams of a creative um, life began to fade as earning money, as earning money in the working class environment wasn't conducive. I attended art college and university, which had an art element to it. It was more of a design degree. Um, but it was overshadowed by post-traumatic stress disorder. But I do remember that those times when I was doing artwork or in free time, it was the only real time I had peace. Uh, just before the first lockdown, um, I started to draw again and paint again, uh, mainly just to help myself relax. I was trying to get into mindfulness at the time, and I remember nothing was really working apart from an art therapy YouTube video I saw which kind of encouraged me to go on those roads. I just began to be in subjects which had nothing to do with my everyday life, really many to escape. That was it really. Um, but during rehab, um, I just felt encouraged, especially spiritually, to begin to put down on paper um, how I was feeling. Um, and it's been nothing short of miraculous, to be honest. I have, you know, I've, I've attended many counselling sessions and I don't think anything's even come close to what, what it's brought up, what, what, yeah, what, what was lying underneath. And sometimes it's the most simplest thing, it's the most obvious emotion. And just sitting there and being in that emotion for, say, two, you know, three hours at a time, um, just helps me understand it better, I guess. So I guess if, in answer to that question, what has my artwork done for me, I would encourage you to look for the tears in my work. Isn't it powerful what Lee says at the end there about seeing the tears in his work and sitting with emotion? It's important that we don't rush through life and therefore rush through how we're feeling, good or bad. Like children, let's not be fearful of recognising and expressing our emotions. Children tend to express their extreme emotions with those that they feel closest to. They can hold it together all day at school and let it all out where they feel safest. Perhaps as adults, we should do the same with God. We are safe in the shadow of his wing. So we've looked at creativity in terms of expression, worship, healing, but Mary is also using her creativity to serve. She's washing Jesus' feet, something a servant would do. Sometimes our creativity isn't about drawing or dancing or performing, but it's what we bring into the world, our calling or our service, and it's owning that. Noah was called to build an ark that would serve his family and the animals. Paul Jeffrey from our church said, didn't he, that his creativity is about service to others by making things and solving problems. Brené Brown says in the book, as long as we're creating, we're cultivating meaning. Anna Wan from our congregation said she wasn't creative, but I don't know, was it four years ago? She opened her own business. Michelle talks about her creativity as being, turning ideas around and asking odd questions and trying new stuff. Sharon says she's not creative in the Bake Off showstopper type of way, but she cooks for others to express her love. Lynn makes blankets for friends, showing her kindness. 
These are all ways of serving. So finally, I want us to think about what it is you uniquely bring into this world. Maybe you're quiet, but you love to listen. Or strategic and love to help others work things out. What you are is enough. I think it's really about accepting and owning and loving who you are. Just a really quick story. When I was working in theatre, there was a pressure in the early days of schmoozing with producers and casting directors so that they would come and see you in things. And this made me feel really uncomfortable. I felt really fake and like I was trying to be something I wasn't. I'm not confident in that area at all. It's not where I shone. And as much as I wanted to be making my living in theatre and expressing performing on West End stages, in reality, I felt much more comfortable working in community theatre. My first acting job professionally was working alongside troublesome teenage boys from um, an estate in the Thamesmead area of South London, trying to connect with them and draw out their creativity. Um, when I owned that and stopped comparing myself to others and that pressure of being successful in my theatre career, it sort of gave me a freedom and I realised that from that very first acting job um, with that community theatre in Thamesmead Estate, it led me very well to the work I now do at Yeldor Manor. So, finally, I have um, asked a friend of mine, Heath Nottage, to lead us in reflective activity to think about connecting to the person God made us so that we can live in that freedom expressed by Mary. Heath is an artist um, and an art teacher. I'll let her tell you more. Hi, I'm Heath Nottage and um, I'm a secondary school teacher. I teach art in a local school and I've also had um, many years of doing youth work both within the church and outside of a church context. And I found that using really simple creative activities really helps to connect people it helps to connect communities together and it helps to connect people with God. Um, we've done some really interesting things at the Whitley Fun Day. We're setting up just a really simple reflective activity, um, opened up some amazing conversations about who um, individuals were and how God can um, connect with them. We've also done some really creative things around Easter and Christmas. Um, and I really believe that when we do small creative acts as individuals or together, we find out a bit more about who we are, but also a bit more about who God is and what he says about us. Um, so I want to just talk to you about an activity that you could do um, as a family, you could do it on your own, you could do it in a small group. Um, it's really simple, but it just kind of opens up your heart to um, to God and to the things that he's put in you that you perhaps love doing. Um, so you need two things to do this activity. I'd like you to find um, some keys from around your house. So I've got um, a rather big bunch here. Um, and I want you to make sure that you've got these keys in front of you the whole time. Um, you might want to start just by praying and holding the keys. Um, you might want to think about what these keys are for, what they unlock, what they keep safe, what they protect, what they open. Um, and we're gonna come back to these a bit later. If you enjoy drawing, you might want to sit um, and just draw those keys just to get you started and just invite God um, to be in the space and in the room with you. The other thing that you need is just a piece of paper, um, just an ordinary piece of paper and a pen or, or some coloring pencils or something. Um, and what I'd like you to do is just write down um, 20 things in any way that you like, 20 things that you love. Um, so I've just done a spider diagram here and I've just written down lots of things that I love doing. These might be things that you used to do and haven't done for a long time. It might be things you used to love doing as a child, um, like building Lego or going ice skating or riding a bike down a big hill. Um, it might be things that you do on a daily basis that you love doing. 
might be that you love reading or having conversations with people. So just write down 20 things that you love doing. And then once you've done that, I want you to have a look at that list and just start a conversation um, with God, really. What are the things that are perhaps standing out to you? What are the things that you're thinking, actually really used to love doing that and I haven't done it for ages? Um, or what are the things that perhaps surprised you as you wrote them down? You thought, oh golly, I didn't realise that I loved that so much, but actually I really do. So for me, just a few things that I kind of highlighted, perhaps I put a ring around them. I really love ice skating. Um, I'm not the most natural at it, but I really enjoy it. Um, and I haven't done that for many years. Um, I really love singing with other people. I'm not a singer, but actually I'm missing that sense of kind of coming together and singing in a community. And um, the other thing I highlighted is making spaces. I love creating um, kind of really interesting and welcoming spaces for people um, and young people to come into and connect with God. So there's just a few things that I've started to highlight. Um, and what I'd then like you to do is to look back at the keys and think about how keys are really important for unlocking um, things in our lives. And um, you might just want to spend a bit of time in prayer asking God what are the things that he might want to unlock in you again? What are the creative activities that actually you really love doing, that you really enjoy? Perhaps God is saying, come on, here's the key. Let's unlock that door again. Let's play again together. Let's um, create spaces together or let's go ice skating together. Let's find time to sing with other people. Um, God might just be stirring up some things in you saying, actually, you love doing that thing. So I'm inviting you to do it. Come and do it with me. And so that's just a really simple activity that you might want to go away and do and use it as a time to ask God to perhaps reveal some of the creative creativity that he's put in your heart. Um, even if that is things like um, planning or organising or putting structure around people, those things are still creative and they're still how God designed you to be. Um, and yeah, let's go on an adventure. Thank you so much for that, Hev. I really hope that some of you will um, do that reflective exercise, maybe in your small groups, or um, it's the sort of thing you can do within your family. Um, yeah, I think it'll be a really a great activity to do. So I hope that on the back of this service, some people feel inspired to try something new as a way of expressing themselves or worshipping God. A drawing class, knitting, flower arranging, gardening, cooking, whatever. But more than that, I hope that you find the time and the vulnerability to search and own and accept what is already inside you that God created you to be. We're going to end now um, with a prayer and the backdrop. We will be using some pictures that Lee from Yeldor Manor has drawn recently. Thank you very much. Creator God. You fill us with your creativity and love. Thank you. Encourage us in the discovery of our talents, knowing that you are in every mark we make and word we speak. Help us connect with your inspiration every day, allowing it to colour our lives and light the way ahead. Amen. Choosing celebration, breaking into freedom. You're the song, you're the song of our hearts. 
So thanks so much to Anna for leading us today and to all who have contributed. And thanks to you all for joining us. If you'd like to know more about Woking and Baptist Church, please look at our website. And if you'd like to go on our mailing list, please message us via the contact details at the end of this video. We would love to hear from you. Well, we've said that the season of Lent has begun in which Christians traditionally prepare to celebrate Easter. I wonder, have you been doing the Live Lent 21 scheme, a thing we're encouraging everyone to join in with? Details are still in our new sheet and it's not too late to start if you'd like to. Have a look for those. Remember, I'll be leading the first of our weekly Zoom sessions this Sunday evening at 6.30pm discussing the first chapter of the book Living His Story, which is the book Live Lent is based on this year. It's all about learning new, creative, beautiful ways of inviting people to encounter Jesus for themselves. Again, details in your news sheet. We'd love to see you, whether you've read that chapter yet or not. We're going to finish today with a song of worship. The song says to God, the only thing that matters now is everything you think of me. In you I find my worth, in you I find my identity. May this sink deep into our hearts and minds today. For now, God bless you and God go with you this coming week. Bye for now. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Just the sum of every high and every low Remind me once again just who I am Because I need to know Ooh, You say I am loved When I can't feel a thing You say I am strong